Coming in at 10, D.B. Cooper. We all know of D.B. Cooper, and if you don't, well, I'm here to fill you in. On Thanksgiving Eve 1971, D.B. Cooper purchased a ticket under the alias Dan Cooper and proceeded to hijack flight 305, which was bound for Seattle. Shortly after takeoff, Cooper told the flight attendant that he had explosives in his possession, demanding $200,000 and four parachutes, otherwise he would detonate. Authorities paid the ransom and gave Cooper the parachutes, and after refueling, he was headed to Mexico City. However, after only 30 minutes into the flight, he jumped from the plane, not far from Mount St. Helens in Washington state. Cooper was never found, but on top of that, his real identity still remains a mystery. In July 2016, a documentary was aired on the History Channel about DB, where they named Robert Rackstraw as the man behind the mask. However, the FBI didn't pursue him, so who DB Cooper is still remains a mystery to this day. Coming in at 9, Ozzy Osbourne. In 2016, The Sun posted an article alleging that Black Sabbath rocker Ozzy Osbourne was missing after a claim surfaced that his marriage to wife Sharon Osbourne was ending over a rumoured infidelity. However, the missing persons case didn't last long, three hours to be exact, with reports quickly surfacing that the singer was well and fine in Los Angeles. His wife Sharon addressed their marriage breakdown during an episode of The Talk, stating, I'm 63 years of age and I can't keep living like this. However, stranger still, the couple were spotted just days later together looking rather chummy, sparking rumours that Ozzy's disappearance and their supposed split it was just a publicity stunt. Strange. Coming in at 8, Andrew Koenig. Back in the day, Andrew Koenig was the star of the popular show Growing Pains. However, on February 14, 2010, his parents reported him missing after he failed to board a flight from Vancouver to Los Angeles. His body was eventually discovered by friends in a Vancouver park, with Koenig having reportedly committed According to reports, the actor had stopped taking his depression medication and was in a lot of pain leading up to his death. Following the tragedy, Koenig's parents spoke openly to the media about stating, before you make that final decision, check it out again and talk to someone. There are people out there who really care. Remember, if you or someone you know is having thoughts, please call the National Prevention Lifeline. We'll link it below. Coming in at 7, Randy Quaid. Now this one is just bizarre. Randy Quaid was an Academy Award nominated actor who fled with his wife to Canada in 2010 in an attempt to seek asylum from a group they refer to as Hollywood Star Whackers, who were allegedly out to kill him. Now their escape to Canada resulted in a lot of illegal activities by the couple, which included using fake credit cards to pay for hotels, as well as squatting in one of their former homes. According to CNN, the couple were eventually granted permission to stay in in Canada in 2011, with his wife managing to get citizenship because her father was born in the country. Randy's request, however, was denied in 2013. In October of 2015, Randy was detained by Canadian immigration officials and was set to be deported back to the US later that month. Crazier still, he and his wife were arrested while trying to sneak back into the States through Vermont. Bizarre. Coming in at 6, Richard Stanley. Richard Stanley, for those who don't know, was hired as the director of the 1996 film The Island of Dr. Moreau. However, he was fired after just three days of filming, with strange stories and events quickly surfacing from the film set. The Telegraph reported that Stanley was escorted onto a flight from the remote location in Australia, with him set to land in Los Angeles. However, when the flight landed, he wasn't on board. More interesting still, a month later, some of the extras from the film discovered him living rough in the jungle, with the report stating that he fled from the airport and was living on yams and coconuts at a fruit plantation. But guys, it gets even even weirder. He then teamed up with the extras in order to get back onto set, and he did this by dressing up in a dog hybrid costume. Yeah, that happened. Coming in at 5, Patrick McDermott. The disappearance of Patrick McDermott captivated the media back in 2005, when he went missing during a fishing trip. The once boyfriend of Olivia Newton-John was rumoured to have disappeared in order to escape debt and money he owed in unpaid child support, with him reportedly spotted numerous times through the years. One specific occasion was in 2006, when owners of a cafe told a private investigator that McDermott visited their place of business with a mystery blonde. Later in March 2016, it was alleged that McDermott was alive and well, and that he was living in a remote village in Mexico with his German girlfriend. However, none of this has been confirmed. Newton John seemed to get over it though, when she married John Easterling in 2008. Good for her. Why wait around? Coming in at 4, Jimmy Hoffa. Jimmy Hoffa was a union official presiding for over 10 years. He was, of course, corrupt and involved in a lot of organised crime, which resulted in him going to prison in 1967 while still retaining his presidency over the Teamsters. He eventually resigned his post in 1971 in order to 
again released from prison, as well as a pardon from then President Nixon. Now, Hoffa was last seen outside a Detroit restaurant where it was rumored he was meeting two organized crime bosses. Folks don't learn, do they? Following his disappearance, he was declared dead in 1982, but the circumstances have always remained suspicious. It has, however, been established that he was by mobsters the day he vanished, even though his body was never found. One story states that he was buried in a shallow grave on a vacant lot 20 miles from where he was last seen. However, this was never proven. Coming in at number 3, Nick Stahl. In the early 2000s, Nick Stahl was a big name actor, starring in films like In the Bedroom alongside Marissa Tomei. Now in May 2012, it was reported that Stahl was missing amid rumors that he had been frequenting Skid Row in the downtown area of Los Angeles. Word very quickly got out, spreading across the media instantly. Not long after, Stahl emailed a handful of his friends, claiming he was planning to go to rehab, with TMZ confirming that he did indeed turn up at a rehabilitation center, because they seem to know everything. However, not long after, Stahl went missing again after checking out of rehab against his doctor's wishes. His wife Rose told Tabloid she would not actively search for her husband again, stating, He knows exactly where home is. It's the loving thing to do for him, myself, and our daughter. Thankfully, Nick reappeared and reconciled with his family, with the reports claiming he was now in a good place. However, they were wrong because things took a turn for the worse in 2013. In June of that year, the star was placed on a 5150 psychiatric hold for unknown reasons, and that very same month he was arrested when cops found him and three others using meth in a motel. Coming in at 2, Dorothy Arnold. For those of you who are unfamiliar with this case, Dorothy Arnold was a Manhattan heiress and socialite who disappeared at the age of 25 in December 1910 in New York City. Now on the morning of December 12th, Arnold told her mother that she was going shopping for a dress for her sister's upcoming party. Her mother suggested she go with her, but Arnold declined, saying she would call if she found something nice. It's reported that after doing some shopping, she stopped to chat with a friend before excusing herself, saying she had to meet her mother for lunch shortly before 2pm. Now, this was the last time anyone saw or heard from Arnold. The family of course became worried when she never returned home, but not wanting media attention, chose not to call the police until weeks after her initial disappearance. They held a press conference, offering a reward for any information leading to her discovery, however, no one came forward. After 75 days of investigation, the search was called off, with the prevailing rumor being that Arnold died due to a botched abortion. More interesting still, in 1916, a clinic was raided by the police and a doctor testified that Arnold did indeed die there. However, her father adamantly denies these rumors. After the death of both of her parents, it was rumored that Dorothy Arnold actually committed due to her failed writing career, but nothing has ever been proven. And finally, coming in at number 1, Amelia Earhart. Perhaps the most famous missing person in history, Amelia Earhart. She became famous as both a pilot and a passenger, and her exploits in the sky made her well known around the world. Aside from aviation, she was also a teacher, author, fashion designer, a magazine editor, and a cigarette spokesman. In 1937, Earhart and her navigator Fred Noonan embarked on a trip around the world. However, on July 2nd, Earhart sent out a radio message asking for help, with the pair dangerous dangerously low on fuel while flying over the Pacific Ocean. The US Coast Guard sent help, but rescuers were unable to locate the plane. Earhart and Noonan were never found, with them being declared dead in 1939, after an extensive search funded by Earhart's husband. Now, of course, the missing persons case garnered a lot of attention, with many putting forth their own theories about what might have happened. The most common belief is that the plane ran out of fuel and crashed into the Pacific Ocean, subsequently sinking. In 2012, researchers spent another $2.2 million trying to prove that Earhart had crashed on an island instead of sinking to the bottom of the ocean. However, this was never proven. Starting off our list at number 10 is Jack Gleason. The young actor played Joffrey in HBO's Game of Thrones. His character was one of the most hated characters in television history for being so vile and repulsive. He played the character from 2011 to 2014, but after the boy was killed off the show, Gleason decided he wanted to step away from acting. The actor was always the first one to say that he is nothing like his character and left the business saying he didn't enjoy it as much as he used to. He was in the prime of his career, but went on to tell interviewers that he didn't want to be in the spotlight and actually wanted to go back to school. He decided to enroll himself at the Trinity College in Dublin to study philosophy and theology. During an interview, he said, and I quote, I hate celebrity culture. 
So he returned back home to school and is also a part of the Dublin based theatre company called Collapsing Horse. At number 9, Shelley Duvall. You might remember her for her legendary performance as Wendy Torrance in The Shining. She established herself as one of the best actresses of her time with her extraordinary performances. However, in 2012, she disappeared out of the public eye and no one knew what the actress was going through in her personal life. It wasn't until 2016 that we got an explanation for her sudden disappearance. The actress appeared on the Dr. Phil show where she revealed that she had been struggling with a mental illness over the years. In her interview, you can tell that she is mentally unstable because she was discussing the fear of the Sheriff of Bottingham, which is a fictional character in Robin Hood. Not only that, but she was also claiming that the late Robin Williams is still alive and is actually shape-shifting. I don't think he's dead. Yeah, you don't think he's dead? No. Where do you think he is? Shape-shifting. <laughs> Yeah. She went on to explain that she has seen him before and that he looks good in some forms and other forms he doesn't. Once the interview was released, Dr. Phil was heavily criticized for airing the interview which was deemed as exploitative of her mental illness. The interview is very hard to watch because you can see that the actress is truly struggling. Next up at number 8 it is Chuck Norris. The actor has had a widely successful career which is probably why it's been weird to have him missing from the acting industry. He has been a household name for nearly 50 years but he recently made the decision to leave Hollywood without much of an explanation. Back in 2005, he turned his focus on his martial arts experience and debuted the World Combat League in the hopes of giving young fighters a chance to shine. He was still finding time to act, but he took a long break between 2005 to 2012. We saw him make a return in The Expendables 2 back in 2012, and then three years later in 2015, when he was a voice on the TV series The Goldbergs. Some fans believed he might have been making his return to acting, but during the 10 years, he only had two credits to his name, and we haven't seen him ever since. Sliding into our number seven spot is Cameron Diaz. Have you ever wondered what happened to this hilarious and beautiful actress? At one point in time, she was showing up in pretty much every movie that was brought to the big screen, but then out of nowhere, we just kind of stopped seeing her. I didn't realize until recently that she actually hasn't been in anything since 2014. That was her last big year in the industry when we saw her in The Other Woman, Sex Tape, and Annie all in one year, and we haven't seen her since. Turns out last year she started making jokes that she retired, and so did her friends and previous co-stars. In March 2018, her close friend Selma Blair did an interview and said, I would have liked to do a sequel, but Cameron's retired from acting. She's like, I'm done. This had Hollywood and fans wondering why the 45 year old actress chose to retire without telling anyone. Not that she owes anyone an explanation, it just would have been nice to have a heads up. In 2018, it was confirmed that she has retired from acting and is now living a very low key life. Since seeing her on the big screen, she has tied the knot to Benji Madden and has also been putting privacy above everything else. She turned her focus to wellness and has since released a few books now on health and aging. In at number 6 is Ariana Richards. The child actor rose to fame with her role in the original Jurassic Park movie in 1993. She continued to pursue acting and even reprised her role in 1997 for the Lost World Jurassic Park. Between 1998 and 2013, she seemed to have taken a break from acting as we didn't see her taking on any new roles. Back in 2013, she showed up in a TV movie called Battle Dogs, which led people to believe she might be making her way back into Hollywood. But she actually left the world of Hollywood behind, and we haven't seen her on the screen ever since. Turns out the actress is now a painter and a very successful one at that. Her artwork is famously known because she does lifelike portraits where people can order them as special gifts. I'm not gonna lie, I think it is a little refreshing for a young woman to leave. Hollywood and still pursue a different form of art and be successful at it. She's only 39 years old, so she still has plenty of time to make her way back into Hollywood if she really wanted to. Halfway through our list at number 5 is Jack Nicholson. The man is titled a legend when it comes to acting, which is probably why it's no surprise that he can do whatever he pleases to do. Stepping away from the limelight was one of his decisions that left people wondering why he just upped and left. Back when he was doing an interview with The Sun, the actor opened up and said, I'm not going to work until the day I die. That's not why I started this. I mean, I'm not driven. I was driven, but now I'm not. I don't have to be out there anymore. In fact, there's part of me that never really liked being out there. Well, I guess it is as simple as that. We haven't seen him acting since 2010 when he took on the role as Charles in How Do You Know. Last year, in 2018, it was rumored that he would be coming out of retirement to star in the American remake of Tony Erdman. 
Nothing has yet been confirmed though. Taking the number four spot is Jonathan Taylor Thomas, also known as JTT or the son of Tim Allen on the hit TV show Home Improvement. When the young actor left the show, preteen hearts were shattered all over the world. At just 16 years old, the actor decided he wanted to leave the popular television show in order to live a more normal life. Many people didn't understand his choice, but he says it was just something he had to do. When speaking on it back in 2013, he said, I'd been going nonstop since I was eight years old. I wanted to go to school, to travel, and have a bit of a break. An education is more surefire guarantee that you have possibilities open to you. JTT actually went to Harvard University and studied philosophy and history and finished his degree at Columbia University. When he left Home Improvement, he didn't completely disappear from Hollywood. He could be found in a few movies, doing voiceover work, and made some guest appearances on TV shows. But he couldn't be found between the years 2006 to 2013 as he declined being part of the Home Improvement finale, which is why fans went crazy when he appeared on Tim Allen's show Last Man Standing in 2013 to 2015. But his appearance was short lived and we haven't seen him back since. Alright guys, at number 3 is Lelaney, who you might know as Hilary Duff's BFF in the Disney series Lizzie McGuire. The show skyrocketed the whole cast into fame and it appeared like the world was at their fingertips. However, not long after the show stopped airing, Lelaney completely vanished from the public eye. She didn't even appear in the big screen release of the Lizzie McGuire movie, which fans were super bummed about. She did an interview with Huffington Post where she refers to the years after Disney Channel as dark. She claims she went nuts and made bad decisions, one of them which had her arrested for the felony possession of crystal meth in 2008. Things got even worse for the young starlet as she was a no show for her court date appearance. That's when the judge issued a $50,000 bench warrant for her arrest. Last we heard about the case was that she enrolled in the Asian American drug abuse program. Her IMDb shows that every few years she booked a somewhat of a smaller project, but her record remains with a serious felony charge that she can't undo. Here we are at number two with Rick Moranis. The actor was adored for his role as Wayne Zelinsky in Honey, I Shrunk the Kids. The actor's career was a massive success, appearing in things like The Flintstones, Brother Bear, and Gravedale High. In the 80s and early 90s, he was one of the hottest comedy actors around. Unfortunately, in 1997, his wife at the time passed away from a battle with breast cancer. The actor says he realized it was too difficult to make movies and raise his two children without his wife. He decided to walk away from from the spotlight and focused on being a single dad. He didn't appear in anything from 1997 to 2001. He then continued to do some smaller voiceover work for the next 17 years. He was pretty much off of Hollywood's radar. In 2018, his voice was heard in an episode on the TV series The Goldbergs, but that is it. The actor has opened up about it and said he meant for it to be a short break at first, but during his break he realized he didn't really miss the industry. He enjoyed his time off and enjoyed being a dad. Taking our number one spot is Amanda Bynes. The Nickelodeon star was once in the prime of her career. She had a very successful career which began in 1998 and went all the way until 2010. Through different TV shows and movies, she had a huge fan base to support her as an actress, me being one of them. But the last movie we saw her in was Easy A all the way back in 2010. After that, her career came to a complete halt and no one really knew why. It wasn't until she began making headlines and not for good reason. In 2012, she was arrested for driving drunk and hitting the side of a cop car. Luckily, no one was hurt, only minor paint damage was done to both vehicles. After that, fans started seeing Amanda get a little bit out of control. She began tweeting inappropriate comments about other stars and even called President Barack Obama and his wife ugly. She also pulled a Britney Spears and shaved half of her head and then filled both her cheeks with dermal piercings. She started walking the Hollywood streets in crazy colored wigs, trying to hide her face from from the camera. In May of 2013, she was once again arrested, but this time for possession of marijuana and reckless endangerment after she threw a bong out of her Manhattan apartment window. Just two months later, Bynes was placed under involuntary psychiatric hold after she started a fire on a stranger's driveway. It was made clear that the actress was suffering from some sort of mental illness. In 2018, she came back to do an interview where she opened up about her past and she said she hopes to return to the acting industry. I am Hoping to girl, she was one of my favorite actresses as a kid. Starting off our list at number 10 is Peter Ostrom, also known as Charlie Bucket in the original 1971 Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. The child actor was just 12 years old when he was.
was selected to play the role. After the movie, he went on to say that he really enjoyed working on the film, but that he decided not to sign a three film contract when the movie was over. When he returned home from filming the movie, he says he grew an interest in horses and was interested in becoming a veterinarian one day. He no longer had an interest in being part of the Hollywood world. He ended up going to Cornell University College of Veterinary and Medicine in 1984 to receive his certificate. His earnings from the movie are actually what funded his purchase of his very first horse. During an interview with Express, he said, Looking back, my paycheck was paltry, but it was during filming that I became interested in medicine. So I bought my first horse with my earnings, and that started my current career path as a vet. Later on in 2005, he moved to New York with his wife and two children, and as of 2018, he works out of the Countryside Veterinarian Clinic where he mainly works with horses and cows. As for acting, he says that he wanted to live a normal life and had declined reporters and interviews for a long period of time. He did admit that sometimes he misses acting, but says his life as a vet has also been his dream for many years. At number 9 is Brittany Ashton Holmes. Ever wonder what happened to that adorable little Darla from Little Rascals? You know, the girl Alfalfa secretly loves and writes his famous line to? Dear Darla, I hate your stinking guts. You make me vomit. I mean, if I got a letter that started out like that, I might quit acting too. The young actress was only five years old when she got the part in the movie remake of the classic show. The whole cast was great, but she definitely stole the show. After the movie was released, she continued to act, but only got a handful of gigs. She ended up retiring from acting very early on in her career after she finished the 1996 sci-fi movie Inhumanoid. She went off to school and is currently working on getting a degree in political science and is now 30 years old. Before MySpace was deleted, she wrote, I was an actress when I was little and did this movie called Little Rascals. It's like really embarrassing to watch and I don't want to act anymore. She is still living in LA though, so maybe one day we will see her on our screen once again. Swiping the number 8 spot is Angus T. Jones. The young actor made his big break on the show Two and a Half Men, but quit the show after 10 long seasons. His reasoning for leaving the show was because he felt the show was filth. He even went as far as telling viewers to stop watching it. Angus explains that as he got older, he felt the show went against his religious views. It was reported that the young actor was earning about $350,000 an episode, but he still felt confident in his decision to walk away from the show. After leaving, he joined different Christian groups like Forerunner Chronicles, where he made testimonial videos about his faith. He ended up becoming the president of Entertainment at Tonight, which is an events company co-founded by Diddy's son, Justin. When asked if he has any interest in returning to acting, he says, The door is definitely still open for me to do that, but I am taking things slowly. I'm kind of liking the ability to travel and to move around at a moment's notice and not have to be in one spot for years at a time. Well, that is fair enough. Good news is he's still young and has a lot of time to make his return. Taking the number 7 spot is Karen Parsons. She's famous for playing Hilary Banks on Fresh Prince of Bel Air. Outside of the show, she had other acting success, but we haven't seen her on the big screen since 2002. Her last movie was 13 Moons and her last TV series was The Job. She up and left her acting career after that and has been dedicating herself to changing the lives of other people. In 2013, she founded a nonprofit organization that teaches kids all about figures in black history. She called it Sweet Blackberry. She did an interview with Huffington Post where she spoke about the importance of her organization. She said, I quote, When you only hear about a handful of stories, the message is, every once in a while a special black person comes along. And that's a dangerous message to send to everyone. It does nothing but harm the idea of black people. I think it's really important to tell these stories because there are lessons to be learned. Incredible lessons about perseverance and determination and opportunity to do something great. Her organization did a project that shared the story of the first black female pilot named Bessie Coleman, which ended up being a huge success. In at number 6 is Michael Schofling. He won the hearts of many young girls when he took on the role of Jake Ryan in the classic movie 16 Candles. He started the movie back in 1984 and quit acting not that long after in 1991. Fans were wondering whatever happened to the heartthrob and we later found out that in between booking roles, he got into making furniture. He now has a successful furniture business in his home in Pennsylvania. When asked about why 
why he made the career path switch, he told LA Times, actors spend most of their time out of work, so I actually spend more time making furniture. The thing about furniture that's much better than acting is that it's just me. There's no director, no script, the concept is me, unless a client wants something. In film work, you do the best you can under the given circumstances, but you don't have control. At least, I don't. Well, I'm sure people would love the chance at buying a chair from Jake Ryan. Halfway through at number 5 is Barrett Oliver. Some say he was the most talented child actor of the 80s after he took on the role as Bastion in The Never Ending Story. After the success that 1984 movie brought him, he went on to star in movies like The Twilight Zone and The Secret Garden. People thought he was well on his way to be the next Hollywood star, but he ended up ditching acting at the young age of 16. In 2004, there was an update on where he was at in his life and it confirmed that he was a photography teacher in California, where he holds workshops and demonstrations about the craft. One fan visited his photo exhibition in California and posted online saying, he has a full beard, wears glasses, and has long hair. His voice was recognizable, he wasn't really tall, and spoke quietly. And let me tell you, they were not lying. He doesn't show any signs of regret or desire to return to Hollywood or acting, and fans aren't totally sure if he would even be able to at this point. Here we are at number 4 with Jeff Cohen. You might remember him from his role as Chunk in the legendary The Goonies. The classic movie came out in 1985, and he continued his acting career up until 1991. When asked why he left the industry, he cracks jokes saying that puberty forced him into early retirement as a child actor. He explains that as he got older, finding work was a lot more difficult. Once acting was out of the picture, he found a passion for law and attended the University of California, Berkeley, earning a Bachelor of Science in Business Administration. The former actor went on to become a lawyer, and in 2008, he was named one of the top 35 executives under 35 years of age. He continues to be a successful lawyer and says that acting has benefited his legal career because it makes him more empathetic for his clients and less academic. He has also done work for the Huffington Post and BNBC from time to time about business and legal subjects, so I guess he's still in Hollywood in some sense. Alright guys, at number 3 is Gene Hackman. The actor blessed our screens for years, but we haven't seen him since 2004 when he starred in Welcome to Mooseport. It's been said that he never officially retired, but we kind of just figured it out on our own, seeing as he hasn't worked on anything in years. Not to mention, he is 89 years old now. Ever since he left the acting industry, he's taken his talent and skill to print instead. He began working with archaeologist Daniel Menahan to write three historical fiction novels. That's right, our man Hackman is known to be an author now. On top of his fiction novels, he also wrote two solo ones. In 2011, he wrote Payback at Morning Peak, and in 2013, he wrote a book called Pursuit. While fans are still missing him on the screen, I'm sure, they must be glad he's still putting his wit and talent into something. In at number 2 is Jake Lloyd. The once child star took on the role of the young Anakin Skywalker in the highly anticipated Star Wars Episode 1, The Phantom Menace. What would seem like the opportunity of a lifetime was quickly taken from him when the movie didn't live up to its expectations. It was said that his performance got lumped into the overall fan disappointment of the movie. For that though, he did book some other roles on TV series like ER and The Pretender. But it seems like after Star Wars, he left his acting career behind. Between the years 1999 to 2002, he has smaller credits, but mostly for being the voice on Star Wars video games. Since then, the actor has made headlines, but for all the wrong reasons. We have learned that he suffers from schizophrenia and also had a few run-ins with the law. Taking our number one spot is Danny Lloyd. For decades, horror fans have been asking author Stephen King, what happened to that kid from The Shining? Well, I am here to give you the very unscary truth. He became a pig farmer and a science teacher. The actor at the time was only five years old and now he is in his 40s, married, and a father of six. In 2013, he did his first episode since he was a kid with Daily News where he opened up about his normal life, saying that people don't recognize him when he goes out in public. He explained that he did continue acting but ended up giving up when he was a teenager. He said, I quote, We kept trying for several years until I was in high school and I stopped at about 14 with almost no success. Danny says he enjoyed being in the movie but went on to work at a local Walmart and drove a tractor on a hog farm. Now he teaches biology at a community college outside of Louisville. He watched The Shining for the first time when he was 16 years old with a group of friends and says that he was not scared. Just a few weeks ago, the sequel to the movie dropped its official trailer for Doctor Sleep and fans were a bit butthurt that Danny won't be returning to reprise his role. Starting off the list at number 10 is Sean Connery. The actor first rose to fame during the 60s when he became the first ever James Bond. That is quite the title to have. After that, he continued to take on roles in box.
box office hits like The Untouchables, Highlander, The Rock, and we all know it didn't hurt his career when he also played Indiana Jones' dad in the movie. We know that his last film before he retired was The League of Extraordinary Gentlemen back in 2003. This was the movie where he got into a fist fight with the director, Stephen Norrington. It wasn't revealed until years later just exactly why he started a movie he hated so much with the director that he got into an altercation with. Turns out he had turned down both Lord of the Rings and The Matrix, so he felt like there was no way he could turn this one down. He told Entertainment Weekly, I got offered the Lord of the Rings and I turned it down because I didn't understand it. I was offered The Matrix twice and I turned it down because I didn't understand it. I don't understand this movie, but I will be damned if I'm going to turn it down. After that, he basically called it quits on acting and he has been enjoying retirement ever since. At number 9 is the beautiful actress Meg Ryan. She has had a very successful acting career which is why it was shocking when she just decided to walk away from it. We haven't seen her in a movie since 2015 when she took on a minor role and many of us didn't even know she quit, she kind of just disappeared. We only found out last year on June 9th, 2018 when she joined her once co-star Gwyneth Paltrow for a panel discussion in LA. She sat down to do an interview for Gwen's In Goop Health event. The two of them talked candidly about working in Hollywood and Meg's decision to quit acting a few years ago. Meg spoke about it by saying, I didn't really aim to be an actor. I was a journalism major at school and a curious person and I wanted to go back into the world and figure out who I was, am, in relationship to other things and other people and other environments. Over the years she has majorly stepped out of the spotlight and rarely makes appearances at public events. That doesn't stop the paparazzi from snapping some pictures though. So I very number 8 spot is Dylan Sprouse. You would know him and his twin brother Cole Sprouse from the Disney channels The Sweet Life of Zack and Cody and then all their other Disney appearances after that like The Sweet Life on Deck. Both of them had huge success at a young age. It was reported that they were earning $40,000 per episode at the height of their career. In 2011, the twins pulled away from the public eye without any explanation why. In 2013, some customers were startled at a coffee shop in the East Village when Dylan Sprouse was pouring lattes and craft beers. Turns out that Dylan went on to study at NYU, which is where he developed a passion for brewing. He did an internship for some time at a Brooklyn bourbon distillery and has a passion for for mead in particular. He is now running his own brewery, which he added into the William Vale Hotel in Williamsburg called the All Wise Meadery. During an interview with Vanity Fair in 2018, he refers to acting as a commission type job and says that the meadery provides a stable paycheck. He also admitted that he often gets compared to his brother Cole Sprouse, who landed a lead role as Jughead in the hit TV series Riverdale. When asked about his brother's TV show, he said, Don't tell my brother, but I've only seen the first episode. If if I'm being honest, when I first saw Riverdale, I had no idea which twin it was. So he could totally just pretend it was him and take the credit for it. In spot number seven is Edward Furlong. He's best known for his role as John Connor in the 1991 Terminator 2 Judgment Day. He was starring alongside two huge stars, Arnold Schwarzenegger and Linda Hamilton. The role made him incredibly successful, which would make you think he was on to bigger and better things from there on out. However, only three years after the successful movie, one director claimed the young actor was and I quote, clearly on a path to disaster. Unfortunately, his prediction happened to be true. It seems like the young actor couldn't handle the pressures of being in the business, so he turned to drinking and drugs, racking up multiple arrests over the years. He had arrests for drug possession, assault, and stealing lobsters from a supermarket. During an interview with People in 2006, he simply said, Hollywood f me up, man. Later in the interview, he said he had turned his life around, but that didn't seem to be the case. After that, he had more than one arrest regarding domestic turmoils. We haven't seen him in anything in years, and to be honest, we probably wouldn't even recognize him. At number six is Phoebe Cates. Back in the 80s, she was one of the biggest names in Hollywood, which is why it was hard to understand why she just kind of fizzled out of the spotlight. She made her first big debut in the movie Paradise and continued to have success in movies which had her fans believing she was here to stay. You may remember her from the later movies she did like The Anniversary Party or Gremlins. In 1989, she got married to Kevin Klein, a very successful actor who we saw as Maurice in the 2017 Beauty and the Beast live action movie. Klein opened up saying that when they decided to start a family, they didn't want work to take away from their time with the children. He told Playboy, and I quote, We have agreed to alternate so that we're never working at the same time. But whenever it's been her slot to work, Phoebe has chosen to stay with the children. It seems like she quietly just kind of left the industry and retired from acting just to be a mom. She's done acting, but she still spends a lot of time doing charity work. 
work. Her son has type 1 diabetes, so she devotes her time towards raising funds for a cure. She also started her own boutique in 2005 called Blue Tree. She says, I quote, I always wanted to have a general store. If I could have a photo booth and sold candy, I would have. Hey, the heart wants what it wants, and I guess hers just doesn't want acting anymore. Halfway through the list at number 5 is Randy Quaid. Yes, Dennis Quaid has a brother and they look nothing alike so don't feel bad if you didn't put the connection together. Dennis has had a very successful acting career where he spent years being called a Hollywood heartthrob. However, Randy has had a successful career also with 119 acting credits to his name on IMDb, but he took on different roles than his brother did due to the difference in their looks. In 2009, his problems began when he and his wife were arrested for fraud by using an invalid credit card at an inn. They were released on bail but then failed to appear in court and that's when warrants for their arrest were issued. Eventually the two of them appeared in court but the charges against the actor were dropped due to lack of evidence. Lucky him. Only one year later the two of them were charged again but this time for burglary after they spent five days staying in the guest house in a home they once owned. Once again they failed to appear in court and warrants for their arrest were issued again. Turns out they moved to Canada but they ended up getting arrested for their outstanding warrants. Taking the number 4 spot is Mara Wilson aka Matilda. She was one of the most well known and beloved child stars of the 90s, appearing in the movies Miss Doubtfire and then Matilda. But after she rose to fame, she disappeared from the spotlight in the blink of an eye. Years down the road in 2016, she explains why she quit Hollywood in a memoir she wrote called Where Am I Now? True Stories of Girlhood and Accidental Fame. She explains that she didn't fit the look that Hollywood wanted as she got older. She said, I wasn't getting any parts. I really realize I don't fit their idea of what a Hollywood actress looks like. There's no room for me here. It's hard to come out of that scene and without some serious doubts about yourself. That's when she began to immerse herself in school, theater, and writing. After she graduated college, she admits in her book that she's never felt better. She writes, things have gotten a lot better since I left Hollywood. A great weight lifted. Now she lives in New York where she's become a part of the comedy and writing scene. She happily lives in Queens with her two cats and says that yes, she still gets recognized as Matilda, but that is no surprise because she literally looks the exact same. Alright guys, at number 3 is Frankie Muniz, who you might know as Malcolm from the classic TV series Malcolm in the Middle. The show ran from 2000 to 2006 and is basically what put him on the map in the acting world. He also did other movies like Big Fat Liar, Agent Cody Banks, and Sharknado. Needless to say, he had a wildly successful career. His acting resume is stacked with a number of different credits, which is why I was so stunned when I found out that he he walked away from Hollywood and is now running an olive oil shop. Yes, that is a thing. Turns out acting is no longer his main focus anymore, although you will see him popping up in some projects once in a while. After he left his full time acting career, he and his fiance, Paige Price, now own an olive oil shop called Outrageous Olive Oils and Vinegars in Old Town Scottsdale. If you go, you will actually spot him sitting behind the register. The now 32 year old says, We had been customers at the store before and we just knew we liked the product and we wanted to do something together. Now it's become our lives. The former actor who was once practically drowning in fame, money and success says that he's found a new passion, payroll. He said, I love doing payroll. I love doing anything with the financials. I'm a numbers guy, so this has been like a dream come true for me. Amen. To each their own. At number 2 is Orlando Brown, the Disney star most known for his role on That's So Raven. After That's So Raven, he went on to other acting projects and also got into the music industry. But over the past few years, Brown has disappeared from Hollywood and has found trouble with the law instead, getting arrested for multiple different things. He was arrested for burglary, which was actually caught on tape, a rookie mistake, so he couldn't even get away with it. TMZ posted a video of him moments leading up to the burglary where he takes a cloth to cover up the camera, but he didn't even wear a mask to do so. He is literally the worst criminal ever. He was arrested again in September 2018 for another burglary charge in Las Vegas. He remained in jail on $13,000 bail, which includes bail from his previous arrest charges for drug possession and resisting a public officer and domestic battery. In his latest mugshot, he showed off a new tattoo on his chest, the face of Raven Simone, his co-star from the show. He also had a huge smile on his face, so it looks like he's not too upset by things. I think 
it is safe to say we won't be seeing him on our TV screens anytime soon. Taking our number one spot is Daniel Day Lewis. People were shocked in 2017 when he basically just quit acting and retired from acting altogether. Some didn't believe that he would actually be done, but we haven't seen him in anything ever since, so I think it's time that we better start coping with this. It was announced publicly in June of 2017 saying, Daniel Day Lewis will no longer be working as an actor. He is immensely grateful to all of his collaborators and audiences over the many years. This is a private decision and neither he nor his representatives will make any further comment on the subject. The actor later did an interview with Variety where he opened up about his choice to retire and he was told that people don't think he's really done with acting or Hollywood. His response to that was, I didn't want to get sucked back into another project. All my life I have mouthed off about how I should stop acting and I don't know why it was different this time, but the impulse to quit took root in me and that became a compulsion. It was something I had to do. It's hard to say what exactly he's up to these days because all we get is a few random pictures from the paparazzi of him just walking around. 